Sometimes you get a puncture wound of an eye, and there's great concern it could spread and affect both eyes. Is that possible? Uh, yeah, the the eye is a um, is an organ, and um, it it is somewhat intimately connected to the other eye in that the actual body interprets eye tissue as being the same, whether it be in your right or left eye. So if you have a serious injury in one eye, like a puncture wound or a ruptured globe, and it's not taken care of appropriately, the body reacts to that injury by causing inflammation in the eye to send white blood cells to correct the injury. So the injured eye will have white blood cells uh, attack it and try and repair it. The problem is, is that occasionally what happens, it interprets the other eye as also being the injured, um, the injured organ. And you could get something, an inflammation in the other eye, which could actually be damaging to your vision called sympathetic ophthalmia. People have actually gone blind in the past from an injury in one eye causing blindness in the other eye because of this inflammatory reaction. If that happens, it's devastating because the pa patient thought that, oh, my injury is to my right eye, why don't I go blind in the left eye? We have a theory together that we sort of think happened. A guy who we have this thing that blind people touch little dots in a thing called Braille. What right. happened to that guy and why we think he maybe had this? Well, yeah, Louis Braille, uh, he was uh, a famous... Um, a famous man, you know, who was born in Paris uh, many years ago, and he developed the Braille system of, um, of, of reading for blind people. And um, it's been very helpful to blind people. But Lewis um, apparently had injured his eye. Um, his father was a saddle maker. And he, at the age of three, he poked himself in the eye with one of his father's awls. Um, and it, it, it obviously damaged his eye significantly, and he developed an infection in that eye. Well, as it has it in his biography and in the stuff written about him, it said that the infection spread to the other eye and caused him to go blind in both eyes. Um, it's kind of unusual for an infection in an injured eye to go to the other eye, unless that eye itself was injured, too, because it's not easy to just get an infection in a, in a healthy eye if nothing's wrong with it. It's possible that Louis Braille actually developed sympathetic ophthalmia in the other eye and went blind from inflammation caused by the puncture wound in, in, in the eye that was injured. And that might be what, w what actually happened, but because it happened so many years ago, they had no other way of interpreting it other than the infection spread to the other eye. So it might very well be that Louis Braille suffered uh, a, 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 a syndrome called sympathetic ophthalmia because of an injury to his um, his, his injured eye causing an, an actual inflammation so in, the, in the other eye. The important fact in this whole thing should be if you get an eye injury severe in one eye, that has to be attended very quickly or you can have risk of losing vision in both eyes. Right, and, and I think it's very important to say that people that have those type of injuries have to be carefully followed by ophthalmologists to make sure that they're not developing um, a, what do you call a sympathetic ophthalmia in the other how eye. Is that, how is that prevented if it does happen? Well, first of all, if an eye injury is severe enough and the eye itself is so damaged that it can't be closed properly, very often what we'll do is we'll remove the eye tissue or the eye because that in itself will stop the body from recognizing that there's an injured organ. Okay. Um, if, if that is not necessary and we close the wound properly and there's no internal material from the eye outside of the eye, the likelihood is, is that you won't, you won't develop a sympathetic ophthalmia. But still, even with that being known, we're still going to be examining the other eye over the next you know, 6 to 12 months to make sure that there's no inflammatory change. If it does start happening, you have to treat the patient with the appropriate topical steroids or possibly even oral steroids to stop the inflammatory process. This is one time the body overreacts on a good area. Correct, yeah, that's true.